those for years. So. And he can see really far off now. Mm -hmm. and that's what I want. Colors and just God popped. And the colors. And oh, yeah. This, you don't so, have it fogged out. So that's what you need is cataract surgery? Mm -hmm. On both eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think from the things that he said, mm -hmm. like, he looked at the refrigerator the other day and he said, what's that on the front of the refrigerator? And he got something, he started trying to clean it. I said, that's rust from the ice maker. It's been there for years. <laughs> and he never seen it. was there. And then he was looking out the window. He's sitting at the dining room table and he's mm -hmm. looking out the window and he said, wow, I can see the trees out there. And they're so bright and I can see dirt on the window. And I'm like, good, they need to be cleaned. <laughs> Maybe you need to go back the other way. <laughs> And you got the distance for yeah, I can see far distance. For distance, oh, so. I could before. Mm -hmm. But I knew he couldn't see because he couldn't see any dirt on anything. Yeah. So his 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 cataract was dirt selective. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Let, sure. Let's see, Lois. You mm -hmm. you've only got when is it your last day at work? The end of July. It's the thirtieth of July. Okay, so you're going the whole month of July. Mm -hmm. The whole okay. month of July. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, have have they have they asked you what if you wanted a retirement gift? I bet I know what they're going to give you. Well, they've already given it to me. Oh, is it, you got already got that five gallon pail of Italian cream ice? Or no, icing? they didn't give me that. They gave me a check. <laughs> I can buy a lot of those though if uh. I want to. <laughs> No, I'm not going with the Italian cream icing. I with, may take a little bit my last day, I may yeah. say. I bet, I, I bet they have the stuff there. They could probably make a cake for you. Oh, they could. <laughs> I don't want one. You don't want a cake? Mm -mm. How come? Because I'd eat it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the way I am. Mm -hmm. At the house, I eat if, sweets. If, if, I don't, if I don't buy the sweets and they're not in the house, I don't eat them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't buy it when I go shopping, but then Larry goes and buys it. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't resist. I have I to can't eat it. either. I eat them all. Yeah, that's like the other day I went and picked up groceries at Walmart. <coughs> and, okay, they brought them out to the car. And I thought, you know, it's hot. I'm going to go inside and get a half gallon of Bluebell. Half gallon? <laughs> A whole half gallon. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of ice cream. Yeah, it is for one person. Mm -hmm. They didn't have my favorite cherry vanilla, but they had my mm -hmm. second favorite, which was praline. <laughs> so cream. you got that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They had that one, unfortunately. They only had one. I would have been off the hook if I hadn't have, if they hadn't had that one. <laughs> so. No, I understand. What did you say you went? Mesquite. No, no, I said. Oh, to buy to get groceries, yeah. Walmart. Walmart, okay. Uh -huh. Is that the little neighborhood store you went uh -huh. in? Yeah. Yeah, I order them online and then go pick them up. No, I have to go because I have to go through, especially on the milk, and I take them out and put them on the floor to get the latest date. I'll oh, they, they always pick out the, the latest date. Mm -hmm. Well, I, they may miss. I don't miss. Uh, I make sure everything, and I don't like any cans bent. So I'm always dicking around, so I have to. <laughs> I haven't had one can. Well, I take that back. I did have one, but that was my fault because I dropped it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but they do a pretty good job. I haven't had. Now, I don't. I'm not. Uh, when it comes to produce, I, if I'm low, I'll have them. I'll order my lettuce. But usually mm -hmm. I get the micro. Heads when I go in. Now, when I go pick them out, I sort through the heads of lettuce because I'm picky mm -hmm. about my lettuce because I eat a lot of lettuce. And uh, so I pick mine out. And bananas and fruit, things like mm -hmm. that, I'm, I, I go later and buy those myself. Mm -hmm. But all the other, other than fresh produce, I, I ordered online. I haven't had any problems. It's, okay. it's nice. Drive up, pull up, you tap on the thing on my phone that tells them which parking spot I'm in. Probably 45 seconds later, the guy's bringing it out, or a lady. Mm -hmm. Is there know. a charge for it? No. Do you give mm -hmm. them a tip? No. Hmm. Well, no. while while we had COVID, um, I had it I, delivered to the house. Yeah. I had Walmart delivered. Yeah, it was great. Yep. Now there's a charge mm -hmm. for it being delivered.
get to your house. Oh, yeah, they have to. And then a tip for the driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, but now you can sign up for, uh, what do they call it, Walmart Express or something like that. And it, it's kind of like Amazon Prime, but if you pay like $99 a year, they'll deliver it to your house for free, or it's part of the $99. Right. But I, don't I think do I might go over there and do the thing like you're saying where they just... Oh, yeah, they just bring the it out. The only thing I have to go in out. for is the produce, yeah. fresh produce. Well, I just, hmm. I time it so that... <coughs> I. I buy groceries twice a month as far as ordering online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course I run out of milk in between. Well, whenever I go in to buy milk in between, that's when I buy my produce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Okay, that is good. Yeah. So that just mm -hmm. that way I, I buy my lettuce and if I want bananas, although I'm getting kind of burnt out on bananas. Uh, uh, I don't know, they just they're I'm real picky about bananas. They gotta be Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. barely out of the green, mm -hmm. but not, but not mushy beyond. or salt. Oh, no, not mushy. I, I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. No, if I can squeeze, if I touch the banana and there's any give on yeah, it, yeah, I can't. Ugh. Me too. Yeah, it's got to um, be tough. We've been yeah. eating a lot of grapes. Yeah, grapes. Grapes are good. And cantaloupe and mm -hmm. oh, watermelon. We'll have that today. Yeah, I hate juice. I've I haven't thought about a cantaloupe mm -hmm. and. Uh, I need to, and cherries. There, I bought some oh, cherries. Oh, cherries! I love oh, they cherries. have been excellent. Yeah, they have been. I, d I didn't even think about cherries mm -hmm. the other day. They're good. So, and anyway. also apples, <coughs> apple yeah. slices. Oh, and mangoes or, or oranges. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I mean, not mangoes, but tangerines. Tangerines. Mandarins, whatever. Yeah. But I did buy Clementine, some mangoes. Clementines. Uh -huh. I bought some mangoes. They have two for a dollar at H E B, and I found this recipe for mango sorbet. Sorbet. Mm -hmm. So you use orange juice, lemon juice, honey, the chopped up mangoes, mm -hmm. a pinch of salt. You put that in a blender, and you just get it all blended mm. together, and then you pour it in a container and put it in the freezer. And then whenever it's frozen, you can scoop it up and make mango sorbet, and it was good. Huh. Yeah, I guess I haven't, I haven't tried mangoes. I'm, I'm not a, a, a very uh, adventuresome fruit person. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I see them at the store. That's the first time I've ever bought a mango. And I, I don't, I I'll don't know what to do with them. <laughs> and I, I'm like you, Rick. I'm I'd like, have to look it up on YouTube to see how they eat. <laughs> what is it? Do you pet it or? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it bites. It it bite. Don't pull the tail and it'll bite. Does it? Okay, I don't know. Those are things I have to know. <laughs> I don't don't know about that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll bite into this uh, donut. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. mm. We inhaled ours, didn't we? Yes. Did you? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I guess I would have, but <coughs> I've been talking, so it's, I was told you just shouldn't talk <coughs> a donut in your mouth. Shouldn't talk with it when you're eating or something like that. <coughs> So, okay. well, <clears throat> while I was gone, Lois, did you what? Where did you get us to? Oh boy! What page? I'm on page seventy-seven, number seven. That's the same thing it was when and, I left. Well, I know, but what? you haven't been back. You didn't. You didn't do anything last week. No, because you weren't. See, she's got this talent to teach, and she didn't use it. Mm -mm. There's no one to teach. <laughs> I, has have have any of you been watching this TV show called Manifest? Mm -hmm. It's about the uh, airport airplanes. Montego Flight Eight Twenty Eight. I've never. No. It's. I I started watching it this year, so mm -hmm. it's season three. So mm -hmm. I missed out on seasons one and two. So it took me probably five or six episodes to <clears throat> to understand what what was going on here. This TV show, I have never watched a TV show on regular network TV that is so, now, not necessarily correctly, but quoting scripture and involving the Bible 
really? the storyline. And what channel is it on? Well, it's been canceled, so. It's been canceled. You can watch it on Netflix, I think. Okay. It's been canceled. Oh, Shoot. After three seasons. But <clears throat> it, it's, its premises was this flight 828 Montego. Right. And it crashed. And then it uncrashed. But in that time period, five years had elapsed. So all these people came back, and of course the people that they left behind or that you know, didn't, weren't on the plane, they, their lives went on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, like wives, well, their husbands were declared dead. So they come back, and their wives have married somebody else. Mm -hmm. Or wow. they're doing other things. Mm -hmm. But this season, they found the tail, tail fin. And they brought it up, and <clears throat> they had this aurora, no, aurora or eureka. Anyway, this government lab was inspecting mm -hmm. it, and they had pulled back some of the pieces of the plane from the crash. And they were trying to, trying to decide. Well, lo and behold, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but anyway, they also found in another, a different place, they found this piece of old wood mm -hmm. and they come to find out that they believed it was part of the ark Noah's ark and it was connected to the flight well all these people that were on the plane have what they call what they experienced were callings and they were they they, mm -hmm. they said they were from God and they were told to do certain things mm -hmm. and if they didn't do them there were severe consequences and so, like, some people, if they didn't do something, people would die. Well, the season finale, which turned out to be the yeah. whole thing, mm -hmm. the, the last scene shows this plane in this government building, and it's sitting there in all the pieces. <clears throat> it's not the whole plane, but just enough to know it's a plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, the pilot appears in the the pilot seat and you're watching from the front and the pilot's sitting there and he's, he moves around a little bit and then poof the whole plane disappears now earlier uh, one of the main characters got, had this calling that they had to return the tail fin to the ocean or severe things were going to happen so they put it on a coast guard ship and it went out into the ocean off of new off of the east coast and all the time in front of them was this violent storm and the captain of the ship, of the Coast Guard ship, got close to it and then he said, no, I can't go in there, it's too, it's too violent. So he turned around where one of the, one of the uh, survivors was, there was a bunch of them on there, I think there was three or four of them, were, were on the Coast Guard ship because they were escorting it out there because they convinced the Eureka people or Aurora people that they needed to return this. If they didn't, there was gonna be severe consequences for, for uh, these storms. Because as long as this tail fin was up above water, there was uh, earthquakes happening and uh, all kinds of, there was these violent storms as long as this thing was above water. So they were cooking back. They were, the, one of the callings said, you gotta take this back to stop this. So in all this time, so they, this, the captain turns the ship around and he's headed back to port and this one of the uh, survivors, she goes down there with an ax and cuts the, cuts the rope that's holding mm -hmm. the tail fin and it falls over into the ocean and it takes her with it. Oh my gosh. And, but she, she, and the reason she did it is because she killed somebody and she wouldn't, and for a long time, for several, for like up to all this mm -hmm. three seasons, she would not admit that she did it until she confessed. That was another thing about the show, people confessing their sins. Mm -hmm. it was, it, it's a strange show, but it was still had uh, hmm. a lot of, it was every, every episode they were quoting Bible verses, they were talking about God mm -hmm. like you wouldn't believe. I, I, I was... So when the tail was dropped off into the ocean, it the storm stopped. Yep. 
it took her and the storm stopped, so it, it came to a conclusion. Well, kind of. Kind of. But we have, we have all the other survivors. A few of the survivors, this one guy, and I can't remember his name right off the top of my head, he, he, had, to, he had this wall in his garage, and he had photos of everybody that was on the plane. And then he had the string down to him and had a little bio as to what, what their current status was. Some of them had died, some of them had been, had died of various ways. Uh, his son was on the plane and uh, he had these, he had, his callings took the shape of him doing drawings. And these drawings pointed out to what future, what things were going to happen. And the, the theme, or a theme was that all the survivors were on a lifeboat. And they all had to work together on the lifeboat to, to, to survive because their time, their, what did they call it? Their the, uh, end of life date mm -hmm. was coming up. All of them were gonna go back to being dead. But it, it was, I had never seen a show like this before as far as quoting and, and mm -hmm. everything was based it was these callings, it was, uh, uh, and they freely referred to God and repentance and sin and wow. uh, all different. kinds of things. That yeah. And that's why it was canceled. I'm sure it is. I, well, it, it, I don't know about seasons one and two, but season three, it was obvious, you know, this wasn't a, something thrown in at the end because mm -hmm. they didn't even know they were going to be canceled until the, yeah. uh, they already had had season four. Mm -hmm. Season four is already written. Uh, so it isn't like they knew that they were going to end. But it was it was a very unusual show. I'm and it was called Manifest. Manifest. Mm -hmm. So if you have Netflix. I guess I'm going to have to binge it. Yeah, if you go on Netflix, uh, I think it's on Netflix, seasons one and two. And uh, I don't have Netflix. But well, I don't need it. I don't but on either. Comcast, you can pull up shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you may be able to do that. But I, and this last episode, there was this. They were talking about Noah's Ark, and they said there was there was um, the survivors were talking about Noah's Ark, and they said there's two perspectives. There's this perspective of Noah, Noah, his what he was called to do was to save people, and then there's a perspective of the people on the outside, and their perspective was the Ark. Noah was on, was only interested in his family, and he had no no desire to save anybody else. So it was kind of a like I said. Sometimes they were off base yeah. in in my to my theology, but at the same time, for them to even be talking about it was mm -hmm. very strange. Mm -hmm. Very strange. Then another show that I was watching, I hadn't figured out. It was only on one season. It was debris. It was on NBC as well. It was about this. Uh, it didn't have the biblical references exactly, but there was some hints of it. But it, it was this alien spacecraft cra or, uh, was destroyed above Earth, and all this debris was falling down. And every place that it fell, it changed people. And it changed time, fabric time and so they were gathering up these pieces trying to figure out what, what was going on <laughs> okay well I don't know what time it is here 1038 so we're, let's get back here to our lesson now that I've uh, taken us way off the deep end okay one last thing before we go back uh -huh. the UFOs that they're reporting all the time now what are they have you well, the, kept the, that with the news the, the government has has said that our U.S. government said that they're going to release this information coming up soon. I don't mm -hmm. know, don't remember the exact time or date, but about what they know, or, or what they have gathered information mm -hmm. about, but they haven't been exactly sure that, or they haven't been forthright as to what exact information they're going to release. Or how long they've been collecting it. But yeah, if you want to catch up on it, you could go to Roswell, New Mexico. No. 
go around a, uh, area 53, I think it is. Mm -hmm. They they say, say they've got an, an alien out there that they've done a biopsy on. Oh my gosh. So. This is getting too weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just be ready, because you never know when. <laughs> yep. Well, let's, uh, we're, let's we're on, as uh, Lois pointed out to uh. us earlier, she uh, said page 77, question mm -hmm. 7, That's and, right, and yeah. also the thought and the discussion, and thought and discussion, and thought and discussion in the right hand margin there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. on that. But uh, before we do that, why don't we have a word of prayer? <coughs> Dear Lord, thank you for this time as we come together on this Father's Day. May all fathers uh, seek out your guidance and uh, your example that you gave us through Jesus. Uh, lift up those that aren't with us today and be with us as we uh, continue our study of Philippians. Give us insight, discernment, and wisdom as we uh, discuss Paul's words. Amen. Okay, so you guys are going to have to do a lot of talking because i got a donut to eat here and I can't talk. <laughs> you can do both, Rick. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but you can. I can do both. And change that towards you. It's <laughs> pointing in the wrong direction. It's it's actually got all of this. So. It does? Yeah. It has you too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Betty and Larry? Yeah, Betty and Larry. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, well, I, I brought it. I wasn't sure that if anybody else was going to be, be here out of our usual, other than our usual. So, okay, we're well, question okay. seven. We're in Philippians chapter 3, and we're still talking about profit and loss, but number 7 says, uh, well actually right above it, it talks about righteousness. Right relationship to God. So, uh, number 7 it says, Paul says that his secure standing with God comes from God and through faith in Christ. In verse 9, that would be chapter 3, verse 9. What does this mean? So, if we go to uh, Philippians mine says can be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith uh -huh. based on faith so righteousness comes from faith in Christ, in Christ. Mm -hmm. not doesn't say anything about working your your ten steps or doing all these things here. It's Paul is reconciled to God through his faith in what uh, Christ has done for us. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right, you guys keep talking because I'm going to take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> if you think that righteousness is something that you do because you are good or you are honest or you give or whatever, that is false pride. And you've lost your focus and you've lost your sense of righteousness because it comes only, only through faith in God. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, over here in our thought discussion, up at the right hand, uh, mm -hmm. right margin, top one, it says, What does it mean to know? And that's in italics and bolded, I guess, it looks like to me, or just italic. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to know Christ, to gain Christ, and to be found in Christ? To know Christ would be relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be in relationship with Him. And that consumes your heart, your mind, and your soul. It has to. Your whole being. Your whole being. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a relationship there that uh, those are the steps or different. There's a little very to gain Christ and to be found in Christ. Okay, to know Christ, okay, that's a relationship. To gain Christ would be that when you're first or when you come to know Him, mm -hmm. know about Him, mm -hmm. you're. you're introduction to him and then to be found in Christ that means 
to me that uh, now you you and he you and Christ are are together so all right well right below that is another for thought and discussion how can you tell by looking at a person's life whether Christ is preeminent <laughs> okay well that's pretty obvious because of the fruits of your life either you're going to have worldly accomplishments or fruits or your fruits will be a faith and believe and trust and uh, wanting to follow the word of God not be a doer but a believer okay alright yeah, I think, I think if we look and, and we can tell what a person's values are Larry Burkett He's, he's no longer with us, the late Larry Burkett. He was a, a Christian financial uh, guru, we'll call it. He was, he was before Dave Ramsey came around. But he said he could tell what, you're, what you valued in life by looking at your checkbook. Absolutely. The things that you spend your money on is, uh, is those mm-hmm. things that get your money. Right. And uh, so, we that might be one one method to see how you can tell by looking at a person's life whether Christ is preeminent. You know, do do people spend time, you know, attention, money? Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the things that we have. Those are the currency that we have. Mm-hmm. When the internet first came out, there was this man, this guy that I read his, back then, his email newsletters. I don't know whatever happened to him, but his newsletters just stopped. But his, his uh, I'm trying to remember what his name was, Stoneman or st- something like that. But anyway, he, was, he would comment, he had commentary. He said, back in the early days of the internet, w- one of the things that people strive internet things was to get your eyeball well, the, when they had your eyeballs, supposedly they had your attention. So his, his contention was the currency of the Internet is attention. You only have so much attention, and you, and you can't, just like money, you can only use it for certain. You, know, you only have so much. And uh, so people were trying, and it still goes today, even mm-hmm. before the Internet, people are... You know, you go down the road and you have these billboards. Mm-hmm. And um, one of these, oh, I see this every once in a while, one of the billboard companies says, uh, has this sign up and says, okay, um, about billboards, people looking at them. It's advertising work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they say, yes, it does, because he just, he read, just read this. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but true. reading and an action are not necessarily yeah. tied mm-hmm. together. So, but anyway, so okay. Well, let's go down here to the thought and discussion number three. It says here: think of the person you know most intimately. What characteristics makes this relationship intimate? ideas? <clears throat> I think you have to trust. That's, to me, very important. Mm-hmm. Commun- what I put down was one of those words was trust, sharing, communicating. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are the elements. There may be some others, but those are otherwise, say for instance, uh, in a marriage, mm-hmm. husband and wife, you, you, you need to have those and you need to share, like, share your dreams. You know, what, what, what do you want to do in life? Where are you headed? What's, what's your purpose? And then communicating, back and forth. You know, tell, tell each other. You know, am I? You know, how are we doing? Feedback. Mm-hmm. I get this all the time. I buy something, and the, the 
particularly if I buy it online, they want to know, you know, they send me an email later on, survey, how do we do? Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I tell them you did pretty good, sometimes I tell them it stinks. <laughs> I, had that, I had both experiences this week. Uh -oh. so, <clears throat> so one of them I had to tell, tell them they didn't do very good because they didn't come out with the result that I wanted. My Fitbit broke uh -oh. and they told me that it didn't, their warranty didn't cover it, even though it only had it a month. So, well, that's not very good. That's what I told them. I would have told them more. <laughs> <laughs> well, could you give me some pointers? <laughs> Probably not in here. <laughs> uh, but then I had, uh, <clears throat> I went to Best Buy and bought the, a replacement. Best Buy did pretty good. So the salesman was mm -hmm. helpful. He actually knew where the product was. Sometimes I go into Best Buy and I ask them, you know, where's Watch and Watch? And the guy's, I have no idea. <laughs> I said, well, you know, why do you work here? <laughs> or do you work here? Maybe that's a better question. Okay. All right, so we got these two thoughts and discussions out of the way. Did we learn anything from them? Well, I think there's, <coughs> we learned that uh, relationships, there's depth to relationships. You can have a shallow relationship or a, de a deep one. I think we need to have a deep relationship with Christ. But down at the bottom of page 77, it says, Lost all things. Verse 8. Paul says uh, in verse 8, More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. So his worldly things stuff, whatever, however you want to label it. He says those are lost because compared to the value of knowing Christ, they're worthless. They have, they have no value to him. So, Okay, it says here, by accepting Christ, Paul gave up his family's affection, inheritance, his community standing, his family's business, and Tarsus and his friends by becoming a missionary. Paul lost stability, Security, sleep, health, wealth, liberty, and eventually life. So, was he committed to this? <clears throat> yes, absolutely, he was. Yeah, I think we there's unequivocally can we say, mm -hmm. Paul was committed, just as he was committed to being, to searching out and finding Christians before he had his Damascus Road encounter. Mm -hmm. He was equal. He, he didn't change his. Or his qualities afterwards, mm -hmm. he just changed his focus. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank goodness for that. Mm -hmm. Well, over here in the left margin, we got some more thinking to do. Are you guys up to all this thinking? You know, it's Sunday, we're supposed to be a day of rest. It's kind of. After that donut, I'm, I'm kind of starting to go. Uh, oh, no. uh, <laughs> no, I know. I was not up to it. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we only got one thought and discussion here. It says, does good. Paul mean that a Christian must literally give up everything for Christ? Does he literally mean that? I think he does. Okay. Right. Because he did. All right. okay. I can't think of much that he did not give up for his walk with Christ. Yeah, yeah he, he did. He gave up everything. He did. Now, okay, that's that's your position. I don't mm -hmm. disagree with it necessarily, but um, maybe the question or another or a way to think about mm -hmm. this would be willing and able to give up everything for Christ. Now that's kind of like having one foot in each world. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous because. Like Jesus said, you can't serve man and God. You can't serve two masters. So we have to decide who's the master. Mm -hmm. And then be willing. If we're called to. That's like, and maybe another way to think of this, you know, sometimes people think, okay, when I become a Christian, I'm gonna that means I need to be a uh, a servant. Maybe I'm called a mission. Okay, and a lot of times people when they think the word mission comes up, they think, Whoa, God's gonna send me to Africa why they're picking on Africa, I don't know. But uh, uh, that's, they think, 
that's the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, I got to be a missionary and I'm going to Africa. Don't you think that it's a process? You, you know that you're committed, but you can't just earn it. You think that Paul did all of this overnight. He had to grow into this, what he was willing to give up. And I think it's a process and it takes time. Yeah. And it's one step at a time. And as you do this one and this one, you're encouraged, emboldened, and then you're ready to move on and keep on and keep on. But it's not an overnight process. And many, in most cases, it is not something that's overnight. Sometimes it happens. You know, Job, an example. You know, one day he had everything. The next day he had nothing, okay. except his wife and and severe skin problems and enough mm -hmm. pottery to scrape it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scrape it with. <laughs> that's pretty low, and it didn't. And it happened pretty fast. So there wasn't any gradualness to it. But yeah, there are, you know, for Paul, he didn't lose all those things or didn't experience all those, you know, immediately. It was gradually in some, some, some respects. Mm -hmm. Some of them, he got multiple things at the same time, like when he mm -hmm. was in prison and so he, he lost his freedom there. And he also mm -hmm. lost some other things there too, like his liberty and his wealth and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right, optional. What would happen if you considered all things lost and rubbish for Christ's sake? Would you become a hermit out in the woods? Mm -hmm. what, what, mm -hmm. what would happen? What things might you have to consider lost that you now value? You know, that's, that's a hard question. That is. You know, I'm not sure how to. I'm not sure either. Sleeping inside in Houston in June. But I don't think that's the point. I I think it's what do we desire to give up. And it's a personal thing, and it, I think it's something that takes, it's a process again. Well, it's, it, it, it could be thought of as, who do we serve? Okay. What, what, as we go through our daily life, when you got up this morning, what, what did you decide is, was going to be important today? What were you striving to do? Make it to the end of the day mm -hmm. and uh, uh, continue breathing and eating? Feed my kitty first, because <laughs> <laughs> she howls until I do. Oh, okay. She, she's she you have she has trained you well. She has. <laughs> so that's what I mean. There's some things that are that need attention right away that you you know you can give up right away, and there are other things that take longer in your decision of what do I not need anymore? What do I not have to do? Mm -hmm. What do I need to change? Um, it's just not an overnight process. Well, last night I was watching this video on YouTube. It's called, it's a channel called Tiny Home Tours. Okay. This particular episode was about Star and Cameron. They were two 20-somethings, I'd say. <coughs> and uh, she, she is a registered nurse and he's an architect. Yeah. And they they, uh, after they got out of college, they had $70,000 worth of, of student debt. Mm -hmm. And they were thinking, you know, we need to buy a house and, you know, the normal things. We got to do this. We want to do this. We want to do that. Well, after a little while, they decided that, no, that's not right. So they paid off their student debt. They wanted to be debt free. And then they said, okay, now we can buy a house. But then they got to thinking, well, the home's in. The area wherever that is, I don't know where it was, but there were three hundred thousand dollars, and they they were thinking, you know, mm -hmm. do we want do we want to go into debt three hundred thousand dollars to buy a home? No. So they decided they were going to live in a van, a Dodge Promaster van. It's called van life. So they built this van, or built out the interior of it, and uh, so now uh, they they live in this van. They're debt free. They're Christians. That was nice. That was another thing nice to hear them while they were uh, uh, talking about their adventure, how they got 
moved from college to their jobs. Now they're living in a van. They can travel. But they, they said to them, number one importance is serving God and staying out of debt, mm -hmm. not being indebted to other people. So they were willing to give up some mm -hmm. things that people mm -hmm. are not willing to give up. That's true. And for them, living in a van, they enjoyed the van. So mm -hmm. they, I think at the time of this video, I think the video is <coughs> a week old. They've been doing this for like three or four months. So, uh, but I like, I like to watch these. That and building schoolies, school buses, mm -hmm. for people. Uh, Hazel and I talked about, you know, when I, when I retired that we, we talked about, you know, do we want to buy an RV and travel? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I'd love to. We, didn't, we didn't end up doing that because she was, you know, some of the things that she was going through. But uh, I, I guess that's mm -hmm. why I like to watch those on YouTube. Probably. There are a mm -hmm. wrath of them, mm -hmm. um, a, a plethora. Mm -hmm. of those. Okay, it's eleven o'clock. We're gonna have to stop there. Oh yeah. She's so go on uh, question eight, we'll start up okay. question eight Let's next start. week. Sorry, I got us all off on topic there. We were talking manifest. We're talking. Oh, yeah, those <laughs> rabbit trails. They'll just yeah. come up. You know. But they're they're fun. It's uh, someday you'll get a teacher that stays on track. Oh, that would not be fun. <laughs> <laughs> We enjoy your your little side trips. My side trips, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Like <laughs> well, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this time. Briefly, that we talked about uh, uh, Paul's instructions to the Philippians, uh, things that he lost in order to serve you. They gave up willingly. They counted them all lost. And may we consider that as we go through our lives. Amen.